All right, like I said, drama we missed yesterday with Ethan. Well, we were looking for a nothing burger of him yelling at AB, totally normal, not a big deal. This apparently was the juicy part of the live stream we missed where he allegedly goes off on Moses. Let's see what it's about. It's a good time. All right, here's, I'm gonna get into something now. <sighs> Nobody try to stop me. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh -oh. oh man. I need to do this. I need to make a point here. Moses, if you're watching this, oh God, you are. Oh no, the direct, the direct, the direct. Okay, okay. Whew. Listen to me very clearly, you fucking loser. Oh! You're a grown man that cries and bitch and pisses to his mom every time I mention your name. Stop. I don't fucking care. I will never stop talking about you. You can bitch and cry and spit and moan every time to your mommy, because you you every t any time and it's not even when I'm like mean. It's like any time I talk about him at all, and it's like guess what, bitch? I this is who I am, and I will never stop. To I will talk about you whenever I want. Okay, so cry, cry more, you fucking loser. Um, I will never stop. And guess I don't even know what this is about, but I'm on Ethan's side. <laughs> I don't even know what this is about, but I never liked Moses. And you know, you know what reinforced that in my mind? Dr. Kirkonda was like, if I ever saw Moses at a party, I wouldn't want to hang out with him. And I was like, he knows. He knows. We all see it. We know there's something going on right there. And I know that because listen, okay, family drama doesn't come out of nowhere, but I guarantee you, I don't think Ethan and Hila are the reason that there's problems. But let's see. Let's see. Because Ethan is self-righteous. But Moses is worse than that. Moses thinks he's right, which is worse. Self-righteous and always thinking you're right, very similar, very different. That's what, I just don't care anymore. And e we're on the same page. We're on the same page, me and Hila. Um, okay, my we love that. We're on the same page, me and my wife. Okay, love this already. My dick. <laughs> <laughs> Send that to, uh, I mean, really, generally. Oh. Just <laughs> this is the this is the only oh way God. I can think to like this to stop him bothering his, his poor mom. This should help. He's always <laughs> well. Like I, I need to make bro. a point that like what a move to complain to your mom, bro. Like that is a move. Let's be real. Just like family dynamics. Now Ethan bringing it up online is a little funny and inappropriate, but also let's not pretend that like Trisha and Moses aren't being weird. It's you know what I mean. He's never he will never succeed in what he's trying to do. He will only ever make it worse. I think they also think that Ethan or Moses is trying to tear the family apart because I do think so as well. Like I do think there's something there. I think Moses from the way that he's talked about his childhood never felt loved by his bubble or anything like that. And I think that there's something there. I think there is something there. I don't I'm going to be honest, I do think Moses is probably more in the fault, more of the issue than Ethan and Hila. And I don't even know this. I'm just using it off of what I know about my own personal dramas in my own life. There's always that one sibling, the one family member, the one friend, the one drama king, and it's usually a boy. You think it's women? Maybe in your families. In my families, it's always a boy. There's too many boys in my family for it not to be a boy. It's always going to be a boy. And something about these men... They do this thing where they need the savior complex. They go and rescue a woman who needs help, Trisha. Trisha says, Moses really saved me. He really saved everything that I was. Moses was like so great. But yet Moses has a bad reputation with other women in his life and his own family. Okay. He isolates Trisha from everybody else. Now Trisha doesn't even talk about Ethan and Hila like she knows them. When Trisha talks about how he met, like how they met, she goes, oh, I was like on a dating show. Hmm. Interesting. Ethan has said nothing but nice things about Trisha specifically and has always said, like, I'd love to see the kids. I'd love for our kids to know each other. But Moses has always been a problem. And I kind of 100 percent believe he is, in my personal opinion, you know. And he keeps inserting his poor mom into the middle of uh, conflict and like not giving her. He's just not he's it's all like one sided because we don't go to her and complain about them to her because we're adults her. we have lives like dude you you have children to take care of just and be a man okay whatever that means that's a very that be a good being a man is you know there's lots of ways to be a man 
<laughs> and be a woman. Be a woman. And I mean that in the sense of like being a man. <laughs> Am I making myself clear? I think so. It's crystal clear. <laughs> so yeah, in summary, hi Moses, suck my dick and shut the fuck up. <laughs> With peace and love. You know? <laughs> like I don't talk about them that much. Like sometimes they come up and I mention it and every fucking time he runs and cries and spits and shits to his mom. It's like grow up, bro. Aren't you like sixty? Like he's old as shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Aren't you like 60? If only age played a role in this. It's the 60-year-olds who have the most drama. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Watch out for the white knights. Watch out for the saviors. Watch out for men who are always picking up women that are wounded. Watch out for all of it. You know what Trisha says in her podcast that make me raise an eyebrow? And she says, I know people say you shouldn't fulfill me, but I really feel like you saved me so much, but I'm still working on it. Trisha is still working on things. But Moses has this idea Moses is this type of person, and I'm not saying he's necessarily evil. I'm saying that, whatever that means, I'm just saying that there's something about Moses that says to me, like, oh, you are the drama. There ain't no way that he's not the drama. Genuinely. Like, he's way older than we are, and he's like an <laughs> old-ass man, and he's crying to his mom. Like, just let her live in peace, bro. Dumbass loser bitch. I mean, It is kind of true. Like, you're supposed to. It depends, but, like, there is a an unsaid sort of relationship that you don't bring the parents into this like don't bring the parents into this you know like keep it amongst the kids if the kids are fighting but don't drag your old ass parents into drama right what the fuck man uh, mom i'm sorry trisha i love you girl <laughs> wow we love to see it shout out trisha oh. shout out shout out trisha uh amberlyn thank you so much for the super chat Brittany simon is a boy true uh, thank you so much for seeing me i really appreciate that i really do thank you so much for the super chat i appreciate it i am a boy and i appreciate you seeing me in that way that means so much uh, i was just clapping for trisha and I, I, that family stuff i'm not i don't know anything about that i don't know about nobody <laughs> no i'm just saying i'm just saying hi girl to trisha yeah love trisha love trisha yeah. yeah we support that trisha Listen, as a friend, I miss you, and uh, I hope that someday we can come back together. Aww. Moses, suck my dick. Moses, suck my dick, too. Okay? Suck my dick, too, because we only love Trisha. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. That's all we have to say. I need to make a point. I need to make a point. Whoop, whoop. I've made my point. <laughs> I will never be silenced. Do you understand? You know me. I will never be silenced. I just don't care. I mean, I care, but like, I'm not going to just not mention your name if it comes up and it's, you know, relevant, especially if I'm not even being mean. But when you do this, I do want to be mean. Mm -hmm. You do so I'm job. being mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> what a loser. Dun, 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 dun. God damn. How old am I? 39. So he's like in his 50s. Yep. He's legit in his 50s. Literally, yeah, yeah, in the chat, most of the people I spend my time with are over 50. And girl, I've never heard more drama and toxicity in my life. Literally, you know why? Because the 50-year-olds were just old enough to have a moment of breaking generational curses, but ended up sinking into boomerism anyways. The 50-year-olds I know, even the ones that try to stay hip, please, you're all boomers and I see it because none of y'all will update your language. You won't adapt to the changes and you complain about young people like you're 90. You know what I mean? Girl, please. That's an old guy. He mm. needs to grow up. Thank you. Old man. <laughs> All right. Oh. oh, he's 46. Okay. Close hey, enough. I'm 46. Um. No, he's a young man. Then. <laughs> 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 he's, a, he's a spry young man. And he has so much life to live. Oh, so much. <laughs> this. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Eli didn't know if you're watching. <laughs> no, but I think she's gonna appreciate what I did. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, you guys don't know. You guys don't know. I think she will. I think she will. Uh oh. <laughs> I need to make this point. Okay. He said they were on the same page. Ethan and Ela, one of my favorite couples of all time, obviously soulmates. Listen, I do not know what's going on. I do not know the behind the scenes, but I blame Moses. Whatever it is, I just know the type. I know the type. They're always causing drama, and don't bring your parents into it, bro. Leave your old parents alone. Okay, you have beef with your siblings. He won't even talk to Ela, but he'll talk to his mother and bother her. Mom, 
Ela's talking about me on stream. Literally, what? Imagine being 50 and then sending <laughs> oh boy. a fucking like that TikTok link from like a tiny drama T channel <laughs> that's like, obsessed with me. I mean, I literally don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> I mean. just imagine being a 50 year old man with kids and you go to a tiny little drama TikTok that's like obsessed with me specifically, like a hate <sighs> channel. And mm -hmm. sending that link. Thank you to all my haters out there. I appreciate you. I see. Now there are hater channels dedicated to hating on me. <laughs> Thank you. I finally made it. I've made it as a YouTuber. You know, Ethan knows. You really make it when you get small ass channels with no viewers dedicated to making content about you. I'm the content. I've made it, bros. I've, I've made it. Oh, I'm officially... The drama. Oh my God. I'm honored. Truly. I never watch any of them, but I hope you know I know they're there because my Discord talks about them. And I appreciate that Discord for the way you all notice how stupid they are. But also, there's nothing like seeing my face in a thumbnail and being like, that's me. Thank you. I've worked really hard to get here. Thank you for letting my bag grow. <laughs> Thank you. To your mother. That's. You know, I, I no comment. <laughs> I'm done involved in this right? shit. This I, I don't know pathetic. nothing about no. Also, guys, that, there's no way that's the real Amber Reed in my my super chat. Like the super chat that came in, the Amber Lynn Reed girl. Uh, I doubt that's like the real one, right? It's probably just a spam account because you guys in chat are like, "Is this the real one?" I doubt it's the real one, right? Like it never is. You oh, can buddy. say it. You can say it. It's pathetic. I'm not. It, I'm, I mean, no, obje pathetic. it is objectively no. pathetic. Say it, Dan. <laughs> it's, uh, it's your call to make. Sir, we all know it's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've pathetic. never seen you unhinged live. This uh, is pretty fun. Oh, you haven't? No, this is great. Well, it's just a matter of time, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you, Ethan. Um, I had some beef, a, a small beef with my brother like two years ago, and I chose not to tell my mom, and he immediately ran to her. Ooh. And it's I was, like, I was kind oh, of annoyed because it's like we could have moved on from it, and then it became a bigger deal. And the thing is, when they do that, Mom, I'm sorry. they do it so they can frame the story so they're the good guy and you're the bad guy. That, yeah, that's and 100% how it was. I mean, it's, we're over it now. It was just something between me and his fiance now. Hmm. I feel like when you're right, you don't, you're not going to go bitch to your mom to, no. try to, um, f to try to frame the conversation to your advantage. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we don't tell mm. anybody because we're fine. That's what I felt like in the moment that he was trying mm. to frame it where we didn't do anything that bad it was it was nate nate did it all and my mom was like i know nate didn't do it all so chill out that's good hmm. w mom but uh but um bum yeah thank you for sharing that nate really is a shame when your brother-in-law is a giant fucking bitch <laughs> and a loser i think and, and a loser right yeah a loser. <sighs> i'll say that stupid bitch I, I just, okay, to be really serious for a second. Open with boundaries. I think, is that the merch I'm wearing today? Yeah, I'm wearing open with boundaries merch today. It's different when you unconditionally love people. I know it hurts Elid not to have a relationship with her brother. But let me tell you this. People are good enough that unless some shit is going down, people aren't going to cause this much of a mess unless somebody's having like a breakdown of some kind or they're distorting information. And I think that Moses is probably one of those people just based off of his track record. He, he just seems ungrounded. And as much as Ethan and Ela are frustrating, sometimes they are, they're pretty fucking grounded in reality. They have strong opinions about their bubbles and their belief systems, but like they're not unhinged. They're not ungrounded. They're just very like stubborn, which is different. Moses feels ungrounded. And though I think Trisha's life has benefited from having him in it, I think it's benefited from her doing the work. I think she gives too much of her recovery credit to him, which I don't like. But also, you know, you don't know what someone's journey is going to be. She has two beautiful kids out of that marriage. I would never want to take that experience away from her. I hope Moses is good and healthy for her, but I just don't know how he could be if he's so unhealthy with his own family. And it does kind of concern me a little bit, but I could not tell you how many successful, educated, breadwinning women end up with men who isolate them from their families, who have beautiful babies with those men, and 
live very isolated lives from their friends and family. There's nothing you can do about it. At least Trisha's on the internet. At least we get to see that everyone looks healthy and everyone's doing okay. Now imagine being in a family dynamic where you don't even know if your sister's okay or if your family member's okay because they've been so isolated by somebody. And no matter what, you can't get through to them because it doesn't matter how many times you call the cops or do a wellness check. Everybody, quote, looks fine, but you know something's wrong because in a healthy, normal family, you don't just isolate yourself from people and accuse everybody of doing things that are horrible, right? Unless there is a reason. Moses has a tendency to seem like a person to make up stories about people that aren't true. I think in a normal, healthy, adjusted situation, you just say, hey, I would like to end our connection. I feel like we're going to raise our kids differently. There's just, you know, but instead it was dramatic. It was a block. It was, you know, lots of just accusations in healthy situations, I feel like people can just learn to move on. Relationships end naturally. People go their own ways. It doesn't have to be what it is. The fact that they're so weird with each other when they're both content creators, that's the thing. That's the thing that sends a red flag to me. If this is all healthy and adjusted, then why is it this way? Why does Ethan have to go on stream? Why does Moses have to go to his mom? Mm? Which but I'll also say this, I'll, I'll even, I even say this, I'll say nice, I say, he seems like a good dad. Seems like he's taking good care of his kids. Hmm. And he'll send that and be like, look, you can't stop talking about me. Dork. Just take that clip and send it to your mom. Oh, by the way, you look like an idiot with your haircut. You look a dork. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Ethan has too much gel in his hair today, but, so I just said both, okay? Sorry. I said it. I could watch three more hours of this. <laughs> I'm just going to say it now, okay? And every time you go and complain, I'm going to do another 30 minutes. They just... True, Moses has allegations. Wasn't that a factor? I think it was a factor. And I think when they tried to question about it, question him about it, it became a factor. And I think Trisha said those girls were lying. If I remember correctly, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. It's hard. Look, uh, it's hard, especially when you con you're confronting like... I'm sorry, certain types of men in your life, it's really hard for them to think because they all think they're so fucking smart that they wouldn't do things that are bad. And I've, trust me, as somebody who has confronted lots of the men in her life, it is a always like pulling teeth for these men where I'm like, don't you think you should go to therapy? And it's just like, you, they think, you know, they, they react when you say, I think you should go to therapy. They react like you literally just killed their firstborn that they don't even have. They're so dramatic it's like, Jesus Christ, you're obviously just being unhinged or you're heading in a direction that I think is unsafe or God forbid, like I help you before you make a permanent decision that's going to ruin the rest of your fucking life. The way grown men have yelled, cried, cried. How dare you think? How dare you think I need therapy? How dare you think I would do that? I can't believe you think that of me. And I'm like, I didn't, girl, girl. Please, girl. Please. They asked me to pretend like we didn't have, like, the biggest podcast in the world together, like, yeah. a few years ago. Like, it's a, it's a huge... They act they act like they weren't the biggest in the world. Huge deal. And they want me to just pretend like I don't fucking know either of them. Like, no, I don't care. Literally, Ethan is so neurodivergently honest about this right now. He's just sitting here like, why are we pretending like this shit isn't happening? That's what I'm saying. Like, what the fuck are we doing? I swear Ethan and Moses or Moses and Trisha are like, if we don't talk about it, it never happened. Don't you think it's, that's what I'm saying. Look at the internet. Look at how dramatic the internet is. The internet is so dramatic. Like it happened publicly. Like, what are you doing? It's crazy. Why? I don't owe you shit. And anyway, I feel like I've been super reasonable and fine when I talk about them, you know, up until this point. And also, <laughs> not that I'm not being unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, AV. There's please. a lot of crossover as well, and everyone always brings up each other to you guys, so it's gonna right. happen. It's gonna happen. Mm. Well, yeah, the latest one was um, Howie kept, he was on me about when his friend right. was coming back. Yeah. So he forced me in this position, which again, I'm happy, I don't shy away. I like to answer anyone's question about anything, anytime. To be honest, okay, I feel similarly sort of with my dramas on the internet. And I actually kind of feel similarly with about everything in my life. I think I'm, this is why I like Ethan and Nila. I think they're telling the truth. I know I'm telling the truth. 
And I think they're telling the truth. And I think the people around them don't, but they have a certain sense of rule of what they say out loud and what they don't, just like I do. Because I know people ask me. People are so confused on why I handle the things the way I handle it. And it's because there are certain moral things I just can't do that don't align with my values. And I think I see that in Ethan and Ela, which is probably why I see them as like, okay, if you're telling the truth the way that I'm telling the truth, then you know you can't just say things on the internet. But at the same time, you can't ignore that it, it happened. Like, I don't want to ignore that things happened on the internet, but also you can't have the real conversations on the internet either because there's just personal stuff that strangers on the internet don't need to know, especially when somebody told you it in private. But it's interesting the way people twist things in public to make it look like you're the one who's starting it or you're the issue. But like, and I think it says something about Ethan and Ela. I think the way that they do handle it, to me at least, that they are, they do know something about Moses and they're not saying it. In the same way that I know something about people and I'm not saying it because we're kind of hoping those people will fix their shit and God forbid the internet becomes a lynching mod for these people when they could have a chance of recovery. It is better these people recover in private than we send the internet after them. And that's the difference is I think Ethan and Eli are like, hey, you're our brother. We love you. We'd really like you to get help. Uh, that would be our preference. But also we're not going to sit here and pretend like you're not an asshole, even though you need help. And that's kind of, I'm assuming, I don't mean to, I just, I'm connecting those dots because I think, I think it's similar if I'm relating it. I could be wrong, of course, but that's kind of similarly to how I'm operating. So maybe I'm projecting, but I, I think, I think that's right. I think that's what's happening based off what they've said. And he, and then he sends a clip of Howie having forced me into this conversation to the mom to be like, look, he won't shut up. It's like, oh you my God. Oh my God. Everybody knows, leave your parents alone. Don't send your parents videos on the internet. Leave them alone. You know, they're not involved in our drama. You've got to keep it between the kids. Bitch ass coward. Loser. <laughs> you, he needs to do some meditating. True. Next time before you text your, call your mom, Moses, do a little of this. I love you, Tisha. I do. I do. I miss you, though. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Got that off my chest. Let me see if I got any texts. <laughs> uh, nope. Not so far. Oh, Lord. Good, Good for you. <sighs> okay. Okay. I think we did it. I think we did it. I don't know what's going on, but I bet it's Moses' fault. I'm just telling you right now. I'm telling you right now it's Moses' fault. Whatever it is. It's his fault. But you know what? To be honest, like firstborn boys, they got problems. They just, boys, there's something about a certain kind of boy brain. They just can't handle being wrong. They just can't do it. They just cannot cope. It is too important to them to be right. And if they're ever wrong, it's like, trust me, as somebody who deals with defensive men, I love them so much. They are ultimately good people, but Jesus fucking Christ. The way you act like somebody killed your firstborn by just bringing up you might be wrong about something. Oh my God. The drama. It's just so much. That's why I say I'm, to be something that'll I'm not doing this much emotional labor. Sorry. Oh my God. I am not doing this much, much emotional labor for somebody who can't even handle a, hey, I'm kind of worried. Can we talk about something? And by the way, if Moses is innocent, then we're all pretty awful people. I just doubt it. I doubt it based off how things have gone over the last few years. I doubt that Moses is innocent. You know, my ultimate concern, of course, which is none of my business, is obviously that Moses came into Trisha's life for a reason. And mostly to use her as a cash cow, which is my worry. Because Trisha is the breadwinner, which is as a breadwinner myself, yeah. You want to be a you want to be concerned that the men coming or the women coming into your life aren't just using you because they're saving you. The only let me tell you the difference because I know a lot of people were worried like, oh, what if Britney's like partner is using her for her money? He didn't have to save me. I saved myself. So by the time he came into my life, I had the discernment. Trisha literally says I was drowning. I was the worst start part of my life, and Moses came into my life and he saved me. And that 
is the red flag. So he went for a woman who is at the messiest time in her life and quote, picked her up, helped her with her money and all of these things. And just some part of me is like concerned. I could be wrong. He could have been the greatest thing that ever happened to her. Maybe he came into her life and truly helped her in every way possible. She definitely seems better. But it's always one of these things. <sighs> it's always one of those things where I just don't know. So shout out to Trisha. We hope she's doing well. Right? And uh, let's hope that Moses is a good person. That's all we can hope for. Let's see. Also, the last time I mentioned the Moses think was on Howie Mandel was trying to convince the clients to reconnect and work it out. Nothing was said about the allegations in that video. Well, that's the thing, right? People are watching a family not connect. And it's like, why aren't you guys talking? So who's the person that's causing the issue? Now, obviously there's an issue in terms of not being able to connect because if they were just two healthy families that said, Hey, we really love each other, but we do better at a distance. I think everybody would understand that. Everybody knows a family member they don't have a close relationship with because they just don't match up with values, but that's not what's happening. This is a falling out. Why are you guys having a falling out? Somebody fucked up. That means somebody is fucking up because falling outs don't just happen. And usually it involves, you know, a relationship between people, but a falling out is different than families who don't talk. And I need there to be, that, there are families who don't talk who have falling outs. That's this situation. But then there are families who just, oh yeah, I know my cousin, but like, we don't really talk. It's not a big deal. Like, I don't, I know my aunties and uncles, but I don't really know them like that. Lots of people have those family dynamics, Right. So in this situation, the reason people are like, why aren't you talking again? Is because there was a time in which they were all talking. And the fact that they don't talk anymore means there was a falling out. And it was more than we saw on the internet. Because nothing that happened on the internet should have been the reason you, you have a falling out. For real, for real. A falling out is different than going your separate ways. Just like a bad breakup where you're like, fuck that person, I hope they die, is different than, oh, they were nice, but it just didn't work out. <laughs> you know? Huge difference. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me. I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, 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 dun.